do you want me to do here? What do you want me to say? That was actually a perfect intro, Grandma. Thank you very much. Uh, so let's get to the tutorial. We want some text in here, so I'll click on my T tool for type, and I got the type that I want, and I'll center it on both directions and make it a little bit bigger. The font isn't too important, but for this tutorial, usually a thinner font works better. And uh, let's get on to the uh, next thing, which is creating a uh, alt click this ellipse tool. And with that, I will connect the W to the H so I could scale them both down proportionately. And let's give it a color of, I don't know, like a cool red color because uh, we're, we're cool people. So now what we want to do is select this and hit enter so we can start naming this. We'll call it ellipse shape um, text. It's important because we're going to have two of these and we don't want to get confused later on. So select this, alt click our duplicator and let's name this duplicator text. And in our duplicator, what we got here is this boring grid. And let's click on this grid here for our distribution and switch it to voxelize. And now we need to tell it where is our voxel shape. So I'll click on my type little dot and drag it right below where we just clicked on that voxelize and drop it in there. So now if I, well, let's go to our text shape. Actually, let's alt click on it for clarity. And let's connect our scale right here to here, X to Y. And now you'll see as we scale this up, the uh, voxels try to keep fitting within this shape. And that is very, very fancy. So I like that. And um, now what we can do is uh, do the same thing for the background. So I'm gonna click this plus sign here, type in BS and we have background shape and I can press enter now the background needs to be where the background belongs it's just, it's just supposed to be in the back here and now it's in the back and uh i could try and reuse some of these elements here like like the ellipse shape but i, I want to have a little bit more flexibility so i'm going to start from scratch here and alt click on this circle and um, let's give it a color by clicking the fill going over here let's make it the opposite of red and uh, let's make it, we can make it the, the same size, but um, it's not too important. Connect the width and the height. I want it to be similar, maybe a little bigger, a little bit smaller, um, or you can make it exactly the same size, but uh, I think this is good. And now we need to name this ellipse shape, hit enter type in uh, background and let's put these next to each other. So we got the uh, ellipse and ellipse and then we got, we'll select our background one, we'll alt click on our grid and just like before, we'll go to voxelize and we'll connect our background shape this time into this input. And you could see something looks like it's not quite right. So first of all, our background should be in the back, but first I'll name it. So this is our duplicator background, drag it below our duplicator text. And if I zoom in, uh, it's not quite lining up. And that is no me gusta. So let's change that and I have to select the, uh, well, both duplicators. So I'll alt, double click on this one, and I'll just do a regular double click on this one here. So I wanna set this to screen space, and I wanna set this other one to screen space. And now they are lining up. So uh, if they were the exact same size, the red would be completely covering, but I kinda like this look where we see it inside of the, the blue circle. And as we, go to our type and however we want to animate this we could see that we've get nice voxel animation if we adjust the position you could do like a uh, you could do uh, you know if you mac uh, mask out some of these top ones 
uh, probably just make the composition smaller. You can uh, get like that that scrolling marquee effect that everybody loves. And yeah, so that is very fun. There's all kinds of stuff you could animate and you could try, well, maybe not that font. The one font I click on isn't letters. So if you want a really thin font, you gotta be careful because it's gonna be hard to read. If you have a really thick font, well, that this one probably will work. Okay, so you just gotta be careful because there's not a big gap in the spacing of the Y. So some fonts will work better than others. Like at, at this scale, it's all right, but now it's like, uh, you know, you can't go any smaller than that. So uh, pick, a, pick a font that works for you, which is definitely not that one. And uh, yeah, so now the um, the thing is, you you could animate it however you want. I could animate the the ellipses in the in the background. If I alt double click on this, we can animate. Um, let's connect the scale to the scale. Uh, sorry, not that. That does nothing. The uh, radius here. So if we want to animate that, we could have a small um, dot there, or we could have them so big that they completely cover the screen. That could be interesting for a, a transition. And uh, yeah, so in in my um, example intro, I just started animating uh, as many things as I could think of. You also can go, come into the duplicators. And uh, let's see, what can we do here? Is there anything that we could we could animate shape scale? I guess we want to connect these two together. So yeah, this is pretty much the same as going to the ellipse shape here and adjusting its scale this way. So you could change it there or you could get that result over, over here. Oops, let's connect these. Um, okay, scale, um, rotation. I don't know if we want to do that. Oh, it doesn't do anything. And um, position. Yeah, this you definitely don't want to do because that's going to ruin your alignment. Size. Okay, size could work, but we have to connect. If we're going to animate the size, we need to connect one to the other. So we got the, the duplicator for the background, duplicator for the text open, which is perfect because then I could... Go to the uh, the size, um, and let's see. No, that's not the one. This is the size. Yeah. So if we click on this little hashtag and drag it to this one, they're both twenty now, so that's good. I would want them to be the same size before I before I connect them. I don't. I think it'll adopt whatever the the numbers, but here we could add, basically now we have a, a lot more um, voxels, and then um, let's go to shape scale here. No, sorry, I wanna go to the shape scale here. So uh, a, a lot of different controls, and uh, yeah, basically it's just how, how much detail do you want? You're gonna get slower playback the more voxels that you have and um, yeah so um, let's just for the heck of it let's throw some animation at this thing so I'm gonna click on my type tool let's uh, we could we could scale it and uh, we could rotate it and really do whatever we want so let's set that scale down to zero and let's so we got that. If you're a big fan of rotation and why you wouldn't be, I have no idea, but we could rotate it. And now we have our text coming in. And if we wanna adjust the colors, we have options. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find uh, my palette here. I've added extra swatches to start off at this palette library here and then I added some colors to it. 
and uh, you could use whatever you want, but I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna go to uh, create array from palette. And now this array, it's at the top. I wanna connect it to the ellipse that creates our background. So I'll just drag from here, color array to our ellipse background shape here and I'll set it to fill color. And, and that's pretty nice. It's a nice effect and um, it's not, it's not going to animate, but we could animate. Let's um, go to our duplicator background here. Actually, alt click on it, and um, uh, let's see. So we don't want to rotate it. We don't want to change the position. Although it's kind of interesting of an effect there but we could go in and adjust the uh, the size and we could see like at a certain size it kind of makes the um, I guess the uh, the indexing changes because there's more as you zoom in and out there becomes more of these dots so they they get assigned colors based on how many there are. So as as you change this size, you're going to get some interesting types of effects here. You can see like at a certain point, it looks like they're horizontal, they're diagonal, and they're kind of going up and down um, at, at angles. Let's Let's not make it too small. Maybe something, maybe something like that. But um, let's go now to our our shape scale and bring this up, something like that. Now the red ones are pretty small, so um, let's find the um, ellipse for the text, and let's make that a little bit bigger. If you want it to be the exact same size, you could just find the number, but I want it to be a little bit smaller. And um, yeah, so yeah, that, that's all I did in the intro. I, is I just messed around with a bunch of different controls and uh, keyframed a bunch of different things and I got some random movement. Also, actually one thing I did do that we didn't discuss yet is under color array, let's all double click on that. So auto index is static, but if I turn this off and right click on index and go to add behavior, I could do a noise for a random thing. I'm gonna do oscillator because because uh, I like it, and I got zero to nine. So got to remember that number because I'm gonna click on this arrow so I can get to my oscillator settings by double clicking on the text here. And I want to set my minimum to zero. And if my memory is um, working for more than thirty seconds, I think it goes to nine. And uh, as you scrub through, you can see the um, the background colors. Uh, they're gonna scroll through all of these, and uh, and it, yeah, so that that's basically how it works. And if you're wondering, always look at this index here just to make sure that you got your numbers right. This should start. It, I don't know why it starts at four, but it starts at four. It goes up to five, six, seven. It should go to nine, and then back down to zero. Yeah, so now it's going to zero, and then when it gets to zero, it should go back up to one. Okay, so the oscillator is oscillating, so that's awesome. And uh, let's see what else we could do. Maybe introduce a stagger. And um, yeah, so this font is almost unreadable, so maybe the last thing I would do would be to I'll double click on that font and pick something better. Uh, that, that one works, works pretty good. You can select the font and use the down arrows to scroll through until you get something, something that you like. And once you get the one that you like, you might need to make it smaller. Do I need to zoom out? Yeah. Uh, make it a little bit smaller and So nothing too complicated, but this is a pretty fun effect and uh, we could give it a play just to see what's going on.
Okay, so that's how we can make text into voxels and animate it.